Thank you for choosing CTN. And now it's time with Herman and Sharon. I love you. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Brooke. That was her voice. That was her voice. Yes, it was. <laughs> She's got a little cute voice. I know. I know. <laughs> Just like her old <clears throat> self. That's right. Uh, we have two of our dear friends. I mean, mm -hmm. the way he treats me, you wouldn't know it. But <laughs> he likes to tease. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> but, but this guy, you, you know, if you want to appear smart, hang with smart people. That's a good idea. I'm and, just, hanging, and just shake I'm your head. I'm hanging with him, okay, <laughs> because he is a prolific writer. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, every book he writes, I always say, you knocked this one out of the park. Well, he knocked this one out of the park again. And his wife, Kathy, smart, too. Yes, I know. Forget well, her. Chuck and Kathy. That's why I married her. Chris Martin. Right. <laughs> and now, you have a law degree, right? Yes, they called it a JD, Juris Doctor. Yeah. So, how many years... Did I practiced you? law for 20 years in well, California. Why do they say practice? I don't know, because <laughs> you're always trying to figure out what yeah. you're supposed to be doing. That's what they say about doctors, too. They practice <laughs> medicine. Hey, hey, Dave, give a close-up of the two uh, young ladies, or young lady and young man, because they're younger yeah. than we are. Okay. Uh, uh, Chuck is the founder and president of Save America Ministries. Boy, do we need that now. Yeah. Uh, he has often been called a John the Baptist for, our, for times. our times. Wow. So just take a look at this. When he talks today, think about that. <laughs> uh, Chuck brings a pro prophetic message. Thank you, honey. Pro <laughs> it's on here, but I can't read it. <laughs> prophetic message in these final moments of history as seductive deception sweeps the earth and boy mm -hmm. watching the news this morning oh my goodness yes it's amazing what is happening I had a guy text me yesterday <laughs> actually happened he is so scared he knows Christ but I mean he's he's just an amazing guy very smart guy like this guy and uh, he was saying boy things are exploding I mean did you see what's happening because he was looking at you know we're pulling out of the treaty with you know with Iran, Iran. Yeah. crazy people. Mm -hmm. I don't want to call her name, but anyway, and and so uh, I just texted back and I said, uh, put his name on there. I said, you know what? With his name, God just said, boy, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I did. And texted back to him. I didn't reply back. But you know, sometimes we get the idea that mm -hmm. he doesn't know what's going on. That's right. And Chuck, he does, doesn't he? Yes, he well, does. he knows, he knows, and uh, as a father, he's very grieved. Yes. He's very grieved. Your radio program, yeah. how do you open it? Well, uh, it depends on the program. I normally will open it with some statement concerning what's going on in our world. For instance, uh, did you know that 90% of those in prison today have no fathers? Did you know that? I. I did I you know that almost like that. every one of those who had been engaged in the uh, shootings in our country have no fathers? Wow. Fatherlessness has mm -hmm. become That a moves curse right into <laughs> this. Mm -hmm. He is so good. Yeah. This moves right into this right here. It, it is an amazing book. I mean, you have things, what you always do in your books, is, it's amazing how you compile this information I mean when you're when you're writing mm -hmm. what do you grab grab it here grab it here where do you get it well you know it's interesting I I really feel like uh, it's the Holy Spirit that inspires me it gives me a vision for what needs to be said wow. and then I I do not outline my books <clears throat> I I write and every one of these books is handwritten handwritten mm -hmm. that's right all nine of my books have been handwritten. On a yellow pad. On a yellow pad, just like yours. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and there's an intimacy that comes you know, when you write like that's that. The, I mean, I don't write. But if I had to write a book, it would have to be that way. Because <laughs> most of the people I have, when they have the, you know, they, they do it at the computer. And then, right, they, yes. You know, and then, and then they go into, they say, sometimes it's just like automatic writing. And I go, oh, that's spooky. Uh -huh. Yes. But so, right. so you write it all out. I hand write it, and then I have it typed, and then I proofread it. And then we 
redo it, I proofread it again, and then it gets proofread by others, and we go from there. But, but it's the inspiration, that's what does yeah. it. Uh, I, you, you know what, I, I, read, I read the books, and then I look at all of the endorsements. This guy has, I mean, this guy has endorsements from people I do not know, I mean, these are named people, I'm not going to go through all of them, but the endorsements that you have in your book, how in the world, what, what do you do, get on the phone and call them and say, I'd like an endorsement? How do you pull that off? Well, These are named people. Well, they are, but uh, over the past 25 years that I've been on the air, uh, an hour a day live on our program viewpoint, uh, I've had over 3,000 national Christian leaders on my program. And so I've developed a kind of relationship Fair. with many of these people. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's born of relationship and they, it's not just relationship itself, but they, they attest in their own hearts to what I do, the calling yeah. that I have. And uh, so that comes out in their endorsement. You, you speak with authority, you speak with knowledge and, and that's what comes across. It's like, you know, this is not, this is not some conspiracy idea. Right. This is really happening. Exactly. When, when you think of, and, and, I, and I've never seen it in the context that you put this, fathers relating to Christ, fathers relating to what is happening in, a, in the world today, right. that we're being moved out of the picture, and, and it's becoming blurred, mm -hmm. and the name Father mm -hmm. is starting to move away. Mm -hmm. Well, it is, and uh, it's not only we here on earth as fathers, but God the Father yes. is despised today, yes. even in his own house. Wow. And so this is a much bigger picture, Herman, much bigger picture. What do you mean by that? What I mean is that even within the professing Christian community, God as Father is not liked. For instance, just a couple of months ago, I received a promotional piece from a uh, prominent evangelical pastor who was promoting a new book. And uh, he said something like this, I love Jesus, but I don't much like his dad. I want you to think about that. Oh my God. I love Jesus, but I don't much like his dad. What he is expressing is the idea that somehow God the Father is very different than God the Son. Yet Jesus himself said, I and the Father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so what we have here is a situation where the whole uh, attack on fatherhood, our fatherhood, our grandfatherhood, our masculinity, is in essence an attack on God himself as father. So yeah. you combine that with the feminist movement that began in the 1970s, mm -hmm. and what you have is a composite in our entire world that is demeaning men, demeaning fathers, demeaning masculinity, demeaning God as father because he's the one that ordained men to have that role of leadership. What is their bottom line? What is their purpose? Their purpose? Yes. Well, I'm not sure that they know what their purpose is other than uh, what it does, it completely undermines the entire <laughs> plan of God's authority in the earth. God intended for men to be his hand extended as a father in the earth for governance of the family, to call the children to order and obedience so that there would not be chaos in the earth and so that we would raise up a godly so why generation. Are, why are men allowing this to happen? That's what I'd like to know. I mean, well, that's a great question. Yeah, I mean, why? I mean, you're the ones with the power. You're the ones with the leadership in this country well, even, and yet they, they like are cowering over these women true. coming forward. In What's the, the deal? In the 1950s, we used to say father knows best. Yes. Today, father knows nothing. Exactly, every commercial you see that. So what we have is a transition uh, over 60 years that has moved away from God's ordained plan for the family and leadership, not only in the family, but in the church. We have this okay. exactly the same thing going on yeah. in the church. And you'll hear it talked about, about the feminization of the ministry and so on. So it's, it's not to demean women. God ordained women for a unique, 
purpose. That's right. In the home, expressing his heart, and uh, mothering children and so on. But he also ordained fathers well, for you, a specific person. If purpose. you were on, if you were on secular TV, <laughs> saying this very. Oh, thing, I know that. It, mm -hmm. the, the tubes in the studio would be exploding. Exactly. <coughs> <laughs> Political correctness, That's right. multiculturalism, and religious pluralism, I call them the unholy trinity, mm -hmm. that have replaced biblical thinking with a new form of secular thinking. And once you move into that unholy trinity of thinking, you can't think biblically anymore. You can't even think rationally anymore. It has become an irrational world. Knowing there is a God, but not honoring him as God and as Father leads to foolish minds and hearts being darkened, yeah. just as the Apostle Paul wrote That's in right. Romans chapter oh, one. So right. And then you, it echoes down through time. Man. It doesn't happen overnight. And so it's happened over the past 60 years. And the world that we live in today, the culture that we live in today is nothing like the biblical culture, the foundation that we had even in the 1950s. Give that statistic again. The, 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 those are incarcerated. Yes, 90% of all those in America's prisons have no fathers. 72% of young people who have been uh, charged with murder have no fathers. And that's just the beginning of the statistics. In the book, we lay out those statistics so that people can understand oh, it's, it's the gravity of the situation. Phenomenal research. It's, it's unbelievable. But I want people to know that this book is not about decrying the darkness. It's about providing a vision for the future. This is a light. How do we move from this darkness back to a God-ordaining view of fatherhood? Speaking of darkness, your first chapter starts using the Titanic as a metaphor. <laughs> yes. W walk us through that, why you did that. Well, the Titanic is, uh, in fact, the uh, producer of the last great uh, expression of the Titanic movie in 1996 said, in reality, we're all on the Titanic together. Yeah. What he was saying is that the Titanic is an unusual metaphor for life. Mm -hmm. It helps us to see ourselves. It helps us to see the seriousness of life and uh, the reason why I did this using the Titanic is... And you point I, out why, why the Titanic is still remembered today and many other ships that went down, Right. they're not. No, exactly. But there was so much about the Titanic. And think about it. Here there it were 1,500 souls that went down on the Titanic. Mm -hmm. Almost all of them were men. That's right. And this is why I use this mm -hmm. as the introduction to the book. Almost all of them were men. They did not necessarily know that they were not coming back. We like to look at the fact that they were so courageous and they were so bold and they let the women and children get on the lifeboats, of which there were nowhere near enough lifeboats for every, everyone. But Here's the question. Because it was unsinkable. Well, absolutely. They didn't need lifeboats. But the unthinkable happened to the unsinkable. Mm -hmm. the un and that's what's happening to us as a country. Mm -hmm. The unthinkable is happening to us even though we think and have always thought we were unsinkable. You know what? It reminds me of the, the expression of put a frog in water. In the kettle, slowly right. Slowly turn the heat up. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even know it's That's being right. boiled. Exactly. That's There's where we are. Exactly. But the thing we, of it is, they, all, they also were partying, partying on the, just having parties on the Titanic without well, yeah. any, you know, they were living it up really and having it, a oblivious. wonderful, yes, totally in luxury. Oblivious. Now, think about it. Like us. <laughs> what legacy did those men leave to their children, their grandchildren, and to the world? What legacy did they leave? And the reality is, since we're all on the Titanic together mm -hmm. as a metaphor, what legacy are we going to leave? Because we don't know. We don't know when a, uh, a tornado is going to come through and destroy our family and our home. We don't know when an earthquake is going to come through and level our city. 
We don't know when a uh, uh, flow of lava is going to come through yes. mm -hmm. and just completely wipe out everything in its, in its midst, including ourselves. In we don't Flor know that. Or in Florida, a hurricane which came through here not too many months ago. Well, that's right. That's right. And so the question is, what kind of legacy am I going to leave as a father or as a grandfather? And the reality is, we all want to leave a legacy. We leave it whether theoretically. we realize or not. Yeah, but we're going to leave a legacy whether we realize it or not. That's true. Yeah. The question is, what kind of a legacy am I going to leave? And that's the focus of the book. Yeah. What kind of legacy am I going to leave? And how do I recover a viewpoint, a vision for what it means to be a father from God's viewpoint? Kathy, do you ever give any input to this guy? Well, of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when our girls were little, we didn't have any sons. We have grandsons. But um, even with our daughters, uh, I encouraged him because he didn't have that kind of a, a father figure. His dad was an evangelist and was always gone. And um, But I'd have him date the girls, take them out for dinner, mm -hmm. treat them special. Wow. Let them know that they're cherished. Yes, right. And every one of our daughters values that so much and desires that, that for their smart. children. Mm -hmm. When our grandsons came along, he did the same thing. He took them out, did guide things with them, and taught them the principles of God's Word. And even down here this, uh, this week, here in Florida, we're with one of our daughters and her uh, three of her four kids. And the Who other are one. All 19 through 24. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they and the 24 year old is in med school and couldn't come and be with us. It's the first time he's missed the family vacation. Yeah. But we always sit down every morning with them and have a time in the word. And it's not just reading the word, but building into them and letting them feed back to us what they think that means. That is mm -hmm. fabulous. And they love it. It's yeah. the first thing we do. We spend an hour after Every breakfast, morning. before we do anything that else. Fabulous. That's great. And uh, it, is, it binds us together as a family in ways that it would be almost yeah. impossible to imagine in this generation. Yeah. So you've given them a structure. Yeah. Oh, yes. That we don't have today. You talk about the mm -hmm. father. That exactly. structure is not there. But what is interesting, what you said, your dad was an evangelist. You said he wasn't there. Right. So he was saving the world. Uh -huh. And his boy said, Dad, I'm over here. And but you know, the, the wives have a, a real important role. And rather than tearing the husband down for what he's not doing, um, help him to see what he can do yeah. to build relationship with his kids. Because a lot of kids today, even though the father may be in the home, he is not tending to them. He's not listening to them. Um, my dad, even though he worked a lot, when he was there, I knew that I had access to him and I knew that he loved me. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, they don't have that feeling. They don't know that their father loves them. Yeah. And, and that's where and the wives come yeah. in to try to help the... And you're his legacy, your dad. Talk about legacy. Well... You know, that, that you, have, you have this, I, this I, opinion about your dad. I wanted... Not, not really. <laughs> he did love me. But I looked around in the church and saw men that were godly men my dad did not walk with the Lord when I was growing up. Mm. Wow. He was a good man, but he, he wasn't really serving the Lord. But I saw m men in the church that were good fathers, and that's what I wanted to marry. I wanted to marry a man that, number one, loved the Lord b beyond anything else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I did. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you start. Did, did you know he was going to be the guy he is today? No. He Any was going to be a, a psychologist. He was in college and going that direction. But I, I saw that he had drive to do something, and I just hooked my caboose to his engine. <laughs> that worked. <laughs> oh, it and it's like Abra Abraham leaving Ur of the Chaldees, <laughs> going out not knowing with his family. How many years have you been married? 51 years. Congratulations. Almost 52. Oh, almost yeah. 52. Congratulations. Yeah, we're moving forward. You might grandchildren. We got married when we were 12. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> just, just decide you're going to make this work, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's it a work. lot of work. Our, you have this in the book, Days of Elijah. Yes. Uh, bring that together. Well, uh, 
Think about God's warning to the earth yeah. through the prophet Malachi. Yeah. Just before 400 years of prophetic silence, God in His great mercy and compassion gives a warning to the planet through Malachi chapter 4 and He says, By the way, read that because He, in the book He does it and, and I go back and go, boy, and it brings back to your mind, go, my goodness, I haven't, you, you don't cover that thing unless somebody tells you, That's read right. it. Yeah, right. exactly. Before the great and terrible day of the Lord, I will send forth, God is speaking, I will send forth the spirit of Elijah the prophet to call the hearts of the fathers to the children wow. and the hearts of the children to the fathers, wow. lest I strike the earth with a curse. Wow. Now, we hear this all the time. Yeah. We hear it all the time, but nobody really thinks about it. They think of it in an emotional way. Yeah. But I said, Lord, what does this mean? How would this ever happen? It's certainly not happening. Mm. And here's what he said to me. This is how I talk, by the way, to the Lord, just very simply. Uh, and he said, the only way this is going to happen is for the hearts of the fathers to be turned back to the Father. Mm -hmm. That was the foundation of this book. That was the inspiration for this book. How are the hearts of the fathers particularly professing Christian fathers. Yes. How are they going to be turned back to the Father when in fact they don't necessarily think they aren't turned toward the Father. Mm -hmm. But the Father says, return unto me and I will return unto you. Wow. The very same prophet Malachi is the voice through which God speaks, return unto me and I will return unto you. Think about this. This is the next to last message that God brings to this planet before the second coming of Jesus Christ. The last yeah. message is in oh. Revelation chapter 14. That's exactly right. Where through the voice of a loud angel, yeah. he says, Fear God, yes. glorify Him, yes. and worship Him that made heaven and earth. Three things. That's the last message, and the end comes. But before that, before because of God's mercy and His compassion and His desire that none should perish, and because fathering is at the very heart of His divine ordinance for the family, for mm -hmm. humanity itself, He says, I'm calling the hearts of the fathers back to the children, the hearts of the children to the fathers. This book helps fathers and grandfathers to recapture the vision of what that is and to walk it out. You talk about chapter 3 where our Heavenly Father is broken hearted. Exactly. Mm -hmm. He's broken hearted. Just like Jesus was broken hearted when He stood over Jerusalem just before His crucifixion, He said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that persecutest the prophets. He wept over Jerusalem. Yeah. The Father is weeping over us. We have destroyed fathering which is the very heart mm -hmm. of the family, the very heart and soul. He ordained fathers to disciple their sons and their daughters. And that's one of the first things, Herman, that captured me when our first daughter was born 45 years ago. God placed in my heart that my foremost job was to be a godly father to Good those children. You. Good for you. Not just to provide a, a, a protection over their head, a roof over their head, or food on the table. That's just the foundation of things. He would take her for walks at, at night and speak the word over her. Wow. And she remembers this. Mm -hmm. She remembers her dad sharing the word of God with her. And that's before she could even talk. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, before she could even talk. Uh, I, what I tell you, as I wrote this book, I had tears in my heart. Yeah, I know. In fact, I, I wrote that down. <laughs> this is a passionate plea mm -hmm. to fathers. Mm -hmm. I had tears yeah. in my heart and I felt, now this may sound strange for an attorney, but uh, I, I really felt that God allowed me, so to speak, to crawl up in His fatherly lap and have Him speak into my ear, my, my spiritual ear and heart so that I could adequately translate uh, His heart to the people. You know what I want you to do? It just seemed like it came to my mind. I, I'm believing that I hear the Holy Spirit and respond to it. But that's your camera right there. You've got about three minutes. Share that theme with fathers out there that are watching. 
my good men, God has called us. He's called us for a holy purpose. And we've reneged on that purpose. We've gone AWOL. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our wives believe and feel that we've gone AWOL. For the past 20 some years, as I've traveled from coast to coast and been on the air for day after day after day, I've discovered that the number one cry of Christian wives today is why can't or won't my husband be the spiritual leader of our home? Wow. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why in the past uh, 60 days or so, as this book has come out, two thirds of all those purchasing this book are women, men. We've got to hear the voice of the Lord now. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day. We can't harden our hearts. We can't play the game anymore. This is not a game. God has called us for a holy purpose. We've got to seize the moment, as they say. Amen. Carpe diem, seize the moment. We can't let this moment pass. It's too precious. We have children and we have grandchildren and great-grandchildren now that are on the line. Their eternal destiny is riding in the balance of whether or not we will become the fathers that God has called us to be. It begins with repentance, confession, how we've fallen, asking the Lord to reveal to us uh, how we have missed the mark, in what ways, and then to begin to be doers of the word and not just hearers, not pretenders, but to passionately carry out his holy purpose. And then the Father will smile upon us yeah. mm -hmm. and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Wow. Pray That's for, his heart. Pray for fathers right now. Let's just, let's just <clears throat> take that to the Lord. Pray for them right now that need what you've just said but we somehow don't know how to implement it. Yes. Lord, you know, you know how serious this matter is because you yourself have proclaimed a wooing and a warning because of your fatherly compassion. And we ask now, Lord, that you would stir in our minds and our hearts, every single one of us, and that you would uh, cause us to rise to the occasion while humbling ourselves before you we might be good stewards of this fatherless, fatherhood that you have ordained for us. Amen. That it not only will heal our nation, Amen. but it will prepare the way of the Lord for history's final hour for our families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.